Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we have Anthony Spiteri, who is the Senior Global Technologist for Veeam. So Veeam develops backup, disaster recovery, and intelligent data management software for virtual, physical, and multi-cloud infrastructures. So welcome to the jam, Anthony. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. No worries. So getting right into it, um, could you please give me uh, and our audience an introduction to Veeam uh, for those who don't know? Um, like how long have you been around for? What do you do? What sort of software are you, are you doing? Yeah, so, so Veeam's um, founded in 2006 and we first started shipping um, the core backup product in 2008. But before that, we're actually founded on the back of a free um, utility for vSphere um, called FastSCP. And this was a free tool um, that even I used back in the day, um, which basically allowed the simple transfer of files between uh, vSphere servers. And that was kind of the seed of the company, but the idea was always to do something more. Um, and the ver first version of Veeam Backup and Replication was actually released in 2008. So, you know, I've been around for that long, been shipping products since then. Um, for the longest time, it was basically based on the one product, uh, Backup and Replication. We then introduced a monitoring software. We acquired a couple of companies to do uh, more vSphere uh, monitoring, but effectively, you know, what we've done is we've now built a whole platform around data protection, which covers pretty much every sort of backup uh, platform that you can think about, right? So we cover virtual, cloud, uh, software as a service, physical. Um, so it's a whole stack end to end. So yeah, um, you know, now about to ship our V11 of uh, backup and replication. So it's become a very solid foundation for a lot of our customers out there in terms of protecting their data. Right. And obviously Veeam's a big part of, uh, just like every other company these days, of the digital economy. Um, and contactless payments is uh, one thing that has become a key part of it, among other things. Um, but what are your predictions for the future of um, payment technology um, in terms of Veeam as well? Yeah, so I guess, you know, anecdotally, I was uh, started the year ironically in, in China, in Shanghai, um, and that's they're leading the way in terms of contactless. I mean, I couldn't even use my credit card. I couldn't use cash there. So it was a bit of a shock to think that I couldn't even use my credit card there. It was all based on the, we, uh, on the WeChat platform. So that's like, you know, an OS effectively where people build their applications and everyone was accepting that, that sort of platform for the money, right? So that was a big opener for me. Um, and obviously then through this year with the, you know, the pandemic and the whole situation around its cleanliness, I think it's really accelerated um, the whole notion of contactless. Um, even though I think in certain regions, like if I think about how Australia ANZ has led the way really in that contactless payment, um, you know, the pay pass and that sort of thing, we've been doing it really well for a number of years. Um, but even when I was traveling in the US, even last year, um, some people were only just starting to get the pay pass technology in, right? So I think, you know, what the pandemic's done, it's accelerated the growth of contactless. Um, even this morning, I was listening to the radio um, and they were talking about withdrawing $100 and $50 bills from circulation. Um, so yeah, it's a really interesting time. And, you know, when we think about what that means on the flip side from a consumer point of view, and then that translates into a, into a transaction, which then is in a company's perspective, there's some sort of data transaction always happening there, right? So data is always deemed to be critical, but now when we're doing these payments in real time, contactless, the actual severity of what could happen if there is a data breach is, is just magnified. Yeah. Um, and digital identification technology has also um, grown in places like China, as you've mentioned. Um, but closer to home in ANZ, um, privacy concerns uh, are not the same. The culture is a bit different. Mm. Um, so that's kind of stalled adoption. So what's your take on this? And what do you see happening in the future for this technology, especially in the ANZ region? Yeah, so, you know, like we're, um, we, Australia and New Zealand are, are kind of the freedom is there, like we like our liberties, we like our freedoms, but we also understand that, you know, the, the culture is such that we, we're allowed to give a little bit, right? And I think you've seen that during the pandemic here where, you know, we've understood that, you know, we need to give a little to be able to get back a little to uh, get a quality of life. So from that point of view, I think that ANZ definitely leads the world in terms of acceptance of this. Um, you know, when you look at the, obviously the greater APJ region itself probably has more, but that's, I guess, more forced onto them from a, from a government perspective, whereas I think from an ANZ perspective, we just basically are, are taking those steps to become more um, interwoven with in, in terms of that technology. So even this weekend in WA, where I am in Perth, 
uh, we launched the Safe WA app, which effectively is a, is a, it's a QR code scanner. Every venue that's licensed or otherwise needs to basically do a register. So rather than basically writing, you know, your information on a piece of paper, it's scanned the QR code and then basically your details are there and logged. Um, and, you know, some people are probably not 100% okay with that. There's still the doubters, um, you know, that want to basically protect their data and are very uh, parochial on that. Uh, me, myself, I see it as just a way of life moving forward. Um, even before the pandemic, really, it was just an acceptance. I mean, um, digital security is, is, is a tough topic that we talk about often. Um, and if we take a step down from in terms of the government perspective and the pandemic, even just generally speaking, when we're transacting online, um, in interacting with businesses, right? A lot of it's been, doing, been done over the internet. Um, we're handing over our key um, identity. We're handing over transaction information. So not only does that information become super critical from the point of view of what we're doing in terms of the, of the transaction, but on the flip side, we want to be ensured that that data is actually being protected. And I think that's where Veeam comes in as well in terms of what we've been talking about, cloud data management, um, understanding that there is a certain criticality of data now. And at every level, there needs to be a thought about how is my data being backed up? Do I own my data? What happens if I don't get it? Um, so yeah, certainly in the next three to four years, I think consumers will catch up and understand that it is, you know, something that's more every day. But on the flip side, we need companies to ensure that because it is so critical now that it needs to be backed up. Right, yeah. Um, and looking to the future more broadly, um, do you see investment into digital platforms as important for the future or is it definitely going to be coming up in the future? And how much of a role will di the digitization of technology in general play um, in 2021 and beyond? Yeah, and again, you know, it's easy to sort of harp back on this year and, and, the, and the lessons learned and what we're going to get out of it. But, um, you know, I've said for a long time that this year we've, is, has been a, been a watershed year for technology. We wouldn't have been successful this year without the technology that we had in play today. If we think about if this was five years ago, we might not have been, you know, doing this even, what we're doing today, right, in, in, in an interview sense. Um, so the digitization of, of generally everything that we're doing and the move towards digital platforms um, has been pulled kicking and screaming into 2021, right? So I think 2021 and beyond, people understand that they need it. Um, there is a, there is a still, you know, a certain reluctance in certain areas. But then again, I think about just going down to the local food trucks that we've got here um, just down the road, right? No one's really accepting cash. Everyone's advertising digitally. They've got their FPOS machines. So even at that level, there's a sense of a digital platform being applied to this basic trade of food. Um, but again, it all harps back to what then happens to that data. Um, I've talked a lot this year about the fact that data is, you know, critical. And a lot of people in the past have talked about data being as critical as oil. Um, I tend to say that data is actually more like uranium when you think about it, right? It's, it's kind of, it's still very valuable, extremely um, dangerous to hold and transfer. But obviously, if it falls into the wrong hands as well, it becomes super, super dangerous, right? So the protection of that data needs to be um, thought about end to end. So, you know, digital platforms are great. Um, but what we've seen this year from a Veeam perspective as well is a serious increase in cyber security attacks, um, ransomware, um, the sophistication of those attacks has increased and also the targets. If we think about um, the Garmin attack that happened early in the year, Garmin got hit massively by ransomware. They basically shut up shop for a week, which was incredible when you think about what they you know, service out there in their customer base. It wasn't just about the devices, it was about their GPS data that they use for pilots. So to think that a company could be offline because they were so digitized that this cyber threat meant that they had to protect everything. Um, and in the, the day, they paid the, the ransom, which wasn't wasn't great, but they needed to weigh up the the, um, the, the, the the opposition to that, which was basically their business going down and not being a functional moving forward. So yeah, nutshell is it's going to be super critical as companies move to digital platforms. We need to understand how we protect the data and then how we can recover and use that data afterwards for good, not just um, in the case of a disaster. Perfect. Thank you. Well, um, that concludes today's 10 minute IT jam with Veeam Senior Global Technologist, Anthony Spiteri. Thank you so much for coming on today, Anthony. No worries. Thank you very much for having me.